last week's video, I talked about my friend John. And one of the things that I've been thinking about a little further about him was how I became Martha. And so did my friend, his sister-in-law, who's very close friends with me. And here's the verse I was journaling. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And of course, my friend Mary, uh, John's sister-in-law, is named Mary. And I kept calling her Martha because <laughs> she is very much a Martha. She's a doer. And I'm a doer, and both of us really dove into the doing of someone's passing. And it's, if you're that kind of person, and there are lots of women who are, we can get lost in the doing and not in the being. And Jesus calls us to be in the being and not just mask all that by doing and doing and doing and making dinner and doing phone calls and all that kind of stuff. I found myself you know, reaching out and helping to sort through my friend's belongings and, you know, cleaning out his apartment and getting memorial services organized. And there's lots of things we're, we're doing in that vein, right? In this time period, preparing for the, the big memorial at the church. And the, the Lord has just been telling me, I'm not resting in him. I'm being my Martha self. That's just what I do, especially when I'm grieving. And so I've taken more time lately to try to deliberately be merry and to deliberately just take time to stare at the clouds and to just, even though it feels kind of useless and I feel like a slug for sitting there staring at clouds, I decided to just indulge in that a little bit here and there. And it really does help. It, it just allows your mind to rest and to just spend time with Jesus and not feel like you have to do and accomplish something all the time. So with these clouds that I was painting, I used my big brush, the number 12 on the right, and the number eight is the one on the left. And I got the one on the left out so that I could paint some birds in there, just using some really watered down paint and making teeny tiny birds. The cloud, you may have noticed that I just painted the sky. I didn't paint the cloud itself. And then I threw in some lighter color for the cloud. And you could make clouds in the shape of things in your Bible. That would be kind of a fun thing to do in your Bible journaling. You know, have some people see pictures in the clouds and stuff. I love to just stare at them and see what I can find. Somebody sent me a picture of a cloud that looked just like Snoopy uh, recently, which was really fun. But I also decided, since one of the things that, that I've done a little bit lately is go to that park that I showed you last week. and just spend time there looking at the clouds through the trees. So I thought I would put the trees in there as well. So you can do just a cloud page, but if you want to do trees that look like they're kind of going up into the, the sky, these are going to be pine trees. They'll look a little bit different if you're using different kinds of trees. But I'm just going to put the trunks of the trees at angles so they all kind of angle up toward a center point because when you're looking up at trees they get tinier as they get toward the tip so that's why this tree is kind of at an angle and I'll add some more trees to it to get that whole feeling of looking up at the sky looking up at the clouds in between all the pine trees so I'm just starting by making sort of that line so that I can tell myself in my head where the tree shape is going to be where that trunk is going to be and then just letting the branches grow out from it. And I'm just scribbling. A lot of people worry about, I can't paint a tree. I don't know how to paint a tree. It's basically a triangle shape that has little wiggly things on the end of it, I guess is the best I can explain. And this color is going to dry back really light. So you can make them even lighter than this if you panicked about you know, making the commitment to paint a tree. But this color is going to dry back, and then I'll put another layer of color over top of it. But just kind of letting my brush dance around on the page to create these tree shapes. And they're all pointing toward the verse on the page, toward that center point where the, uh, the verse about Martha and Mary is. And I'll do one more tree over here. You could do a whole circle around the whole thing as if you're looking completely up in the center of a circle of trees, too. Mine are just going to be at the bottom in this bottom section here. So 
with something like this, you can do your trees straight and you would use the same kind of tree shape, the same technique to paint the trees. Um, so that if you're not interested in doing something where you're looking up at the trees, then you could follow the same kind of way of painting one. So now that everything's dry and I had it ironed again so that it was relatively flat because that's what happens with ironing. It flattens your paper out so you can continue to work it more. I'm going to add another layer, letting some of the lighter green show through so that I'm putting less paint down, but I can do it in a more detailed way. You could use a smaller brush to do this portion and then let some of those little fussier details on the tree create a little, more, little bit more of a lacy look than you might get from the original, you know, big blobs of shapes to put on here. Now also, I'm not using any page prep, you may have noticed. A lot of people ask that in the comments on these videos, and I don't use page prep any more than ever necessary. I think I've only probably got one or two videos at the most out of all of the ones that are here on YouTube with any page prep at all, because I don't find that these watercolors that I use bleed through at all. And page prep makes the page kind of shiny and gives it a different texture, which I don't find particularly exciting. <laughs> I like the page to feel like a Bible page. And these pages end up doing that. They do have a slight wrinkle to them because you're never going to get the page back 100% because you're adding water to paper. And water and paper just, they, they don't get along as a natural course of things. So that's just what you have to deal with when you do any painting but that doesn't bother me as much as it bothers me to have that texture or something on the page but if you're going to use a lot of other mediums or if you're going to use certain watercolors that do bleed some of the really cheap like dollar store type of watercolors do actually bleed through so you'd have to use page prep for those i added the words on this page in just a simple micron pen it's okay to just be. I thought it'd be really nice to flip through my Bible sometimes and see that reminder that it's okay to just be like Mary did. She was just with him, spend time at his feet. And that was the better part rather than all the doing and the running around and getting everything done. Sometimes we just need to be. So I give you permission to do that. I'll see you guys again next week. Bye-bye.